Hi, and welcome to another of my reviews. And today we're having a look at a Hornby model. That's right, another Hornby model. In the last review, we looked at a Batman model, and now we're going back to Hornby in this review. But this time, we're having a look at a stunning model. And this one is the Brush Type 2 Class 31 in BR Green livery. And the running number of this one is D5512. And I bought this model back in October during their Diesel Gala on the 7th. We went to Kidderminster and after buying some sausage and chips from the chip shop, oh, we went to a little place called Foot Place. I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but I will link it in the description below. And they sell a lot of models though. They do a bit of Lima, they sell Hornby, Backman, Helgen, and I think they do V Trains as well, but I can't remember. And that's where I got this model from. And as you can see, it cost £82.50, but I don't care about that. But anyway, all bad focus there. Right, so let's get this open and see what it's like. If we just use a bit of gravity to get it out. So here's the box sleeve. This is going to be the box that splits in two. I just know it. And on the back, we get a picture of the locomotive in real life. And it's actually D5512. And we get some brief history on the class. It starts off with the first one, D5500, was built. It was the prototype. It's preserved now in the National Railway Museum in York. And the first batch of 20 were delivered in 1957. They are known as the Brush Type 2s because they are built by Brush. And they have a weird bulky design which is known as the A1A. Some people call it II, but it's A1A. But it's a very weird name. It's not Coco, it's not Bobo, and it's certainly not one Coco one either. There's still some 31s about in service today. But the only ones that are, are Network Rail and Devon and Cornwall Railways. But it states here that the ones that are still in service are Network Rail and Fragment Set. But then again, to be fair, I can't complain about that. Because at the time when they released this model, it was Fragment Set back then, not Devon and Cornwall Railways. Because it wasn't founded then. It also says that there was some re-engined, well re-engined, should I say, too. D5500 was one of them. And it also talks a little bit about this one here. It says D5512 was withdrawn in November 1978 and disposal taking place at BRL Doncaster Works. So sadly, this loco did not survive the Cutter's Torch. The scrap man got his hands on it, which is a shame. But there are still some Class 31s about in Britain. There's a number of them in preservation. Okay, now that's all that's left for us to do, is to get it open. It has been opened before, but I have put it back in the box to show you what it's like. So there's the standard on the box. That can get to one side because it's not special. And here is this card insert. But apologies then, got interrupted. Hopefully it shouldn't happen again. Right, so here are the instructions for the class 31. And it's basically the usual stuff. We've all seen it before, so it's nothing new. No one's unfamiliar with it, unless you're new to the hobby, of course. That goes to one side. And then we have this, the DCC jacket. Right, now here's the model itself. Now it was wrapped in tissue paper, but I've taken it off, because... It was all shredded up. I don't, and I throw them in the bin afterwards anyway. Okay, so first, we take these plastic bands off. And then, off comes the window. And then here, is the remains of the details. I have put most of them on and it's just the coupling and a few of these head coat discs. 
So we'll whack that back in there. Take the top off. And then lift the model out. And it rests on these plastic pegs which secure it in place for transit to take it to your house. And you certainly don't get this packaging with anybody else. Well now we lift the model up and we have a look at it. But oh, wow, look at this. Well first of all, I will say this, it's definitely better than the Lima order. Which I do have. Well sorry about that, I'm not the camera. And here it is. Okay, that was pretty lame. But there is a lot of difference from the Lima model to the Hornby one. But I will say this. This is a shed black. And throughout the 90s and 80s, locomotives would have carried these, and they would have had different pictures on to say which shed it was. For example, our p a power station would have been Didcot. This one is the saddle. And do you know which shed this is? If you don't know, I will tell you. It's Bescot. That's right, Bescot. And that is where I live now, so that is really cool. And if we go to Biscuit now, you will still see the saddle logo on the shed. So this locomotive would have been stationed in Biscuit. It's not now, obviously, because times have changed. But what's even more depressing, 31116 no longer exists. She was scrapped. I don't know what year it was scrapped. If any of you know, comments below, because I'll be interested. But... I will say this, it did carry this livery in for structure, which is a very unique livery. But it's just a shame it no longer exists. But there is a lot of difference between these two models, like I said. For starters, with Hornby's model, it's very heavy. So this would easily pull 15 coaches, and there's no traction tyres on it, because it's not going to need them, because it's that heavy, the way it helps. However, the story with Lemus is different, it's not so heavy, and there's not very much weight in this. And this model does have traction tyres, as you can see. But this would not pull 15 coaches, this would only pull 5 or 6, probably 7 at a push, but it wouldn't pull 15, guaranteed, because it would just wheel slip. In fact, the motor would probably burn out as well. Also, this model, it's pretty much basic. It's nice, but it's basic. I mean, just look at the detailing on it compared to Hornby's. There is, if you can just hold this model still, there's a lot of difference to it in quality and detailing. One example, look at the roof. With Hornby's, you get a grill with an actual fan underneath. With Lemurs, well, there is a fan there, but it's just part of the pattern. It's basic. With Hornby's, you get not only this detailing here, which is basically where... I think this is the detailing where they didn't rebuild the roof fully, and they cover that over later. You don't get that with Lemurs of course, but here you get a circle with an oval in the middle. That's a very nice feel to that texture. With lemurs, you only get the circle. Also, these lines on the roof. With hornbys, they stop right up to just about where the fan is there, that detailing. With lemurs, it stops before it gets to it. Also, just look at the way the lines are done compared to lemurs. Also, the exhausts are different. And also, another thing, apart from the livery, the Hornby's has proper wipers. Lemurs 
they're just a scratch on the windows. And of course the detailing on the buffer beam, that's basic too. And you get these chunky cut things that not everybody likes. So alas, Lima's model is not as good. It's still nice, like I say, but it's basic. With Hornby's, it's much, much better. They have bought a Lima model out in the railroad range, but the super detailing model, which you can get in many different liveries, such as BR Blue Weathered, Network Rail, Regional Railways, Rail Freight, the Civil Engineers, I do believe Coal Sector, and this, there's just many to choose from. Pick one and get it. Because I think everyone should have one of these. They're just beauts. But anyway, let's start properly with the model. First of all, as I said, we have proper wipers on the windows. We have spoon buffers. It's what you expect. With Hornby's premium models. The bogies, they're just really nice detailed. Just look at that. Okay, none of it's painted, but if you saw the photograph earlier on I showed you, none of it was painted on. So it looks better this way. The fuel tank there, it's nice detailed too. The livery is spot on, as always. We get handrails going down the side there, and they're not basic, they're metal, and they've been put on separately. We also have opening doors, look at that, on both sides. We also do have painted cab detailing in there. I don't know if you can see, but it is in there. You might just be able to see it. Here, yeah, I can just about see something there. But only just. We do get working lights. All the ones at the front light up white, and it's just two there that light up red when it's going in reverse. We have detailing on the buffer beam, which I've added myself, but it took an age to do. It wasn't very easy. And I've also added the head cow discs on as well. They weren't easy to put in either. But having said that, they weren't as difficult to put in as the buffer beam detailing. We also have some more detailing down here that's fragile. Do be careful with it. We also have a little chain hook there on the hook. But I have folded it over to stop it from dangling about. If that makes any sense. We also have some detailing around here as well. The BR light crest is accurate. And we have some nice glazing all over the model. So about that then bad focus. But I like the fact that there's white lines that's going on the windows there. And that's a nice touch. The grills have a nice texture to them and I suppose if you wanted to you could weather them we also get a door there which open up to start the engine we have some more grills here nice texture to them and the roof well I've explained it already I don't know why there's a mark on there I'll take it off later I've already explained about the roof, we get some nice exhaust there. I can just put my fingers in the right place. And I suppose if you wanted to, you could weather it. We have a grill with a fake fan underneath, as you can see. We have a circle there with a oval in. I've already explained about that, but that's very nicely detailed. Look at the ridge on it. And then we have this here. Which, like I say, I think it's when they didn't complete the roof fully, but they did later on. And we also get a builder's plate. They're just under the number D5512, which is crisply printed. 
It says brush on it, but I can't read what else it says. And the detailing is just as nice on this side too. And what I do love about this model is the white lines that go all the way around the model's body, around the cab on the windows and on the bottom. That is just really nice. And it does have NEM sockets as well. As you can see, I've added one cup in there. Here's some more detail on the back, which is the same. And as you can see, there's the buffer beam detail again. Again, that took an age to do, but it was worth the result. And there's the white lines going through the windows again, and the bogey detailing. And there's the head code discs again, which I've added on the rear. We get another builder's plate there as well. And we get some more detailing here, which is very nicely done. And it's not moulded. In fact, well, none of it on this model is moulded. And that's about it, to be honest. I've covered most of it. Oh, and there's, there is some rivets as well on the body so that should keep the rivets counters busy from criticising the model but wow there's nothing much else to say this is a stunning model there's definitely quality in this and comparing it to lemurs there's just no competition Hornby's wins hands down It's definitely better by far than lemurs. There's just... Well, there's not, not much more else to say, really, because I've covered a lot of it in detail. What more else is there to say? Oh, you can just see the detailing in there now. You can see it properly. Oh, and the buffer beam is accurate as well. They've done it really nice. I will say this about the Lehman model. They have captured the shape of the 31 accurately. As you can see, I will give it that. But it's still basic. So that's about it, to be honest, for the detailing. Oh no, there isn't. There's a line down there as well, which is very nice. But anyway, let's put it on the tracks and see how it runs. Right, well here we are at the test track. I've explained it in the last review, if you saw it, when I was looking at the Batman Class 37. I used to be able, before this was an actual bedroom, to have a circular layer sort of around around the room but now there's a cupboard a wardrobe and a bed and all other things in here i can't do that so it's just going to be a basic test track where the loco runs up and down but it will do because maybe sometime before i get a layout so just have to bear with me but anyway let's concentrate with this review shall we right so let's just put the 31 oh we saw the lights flicker then just like in the last video so that's a good sign there's some power there. Right, so. That's one bogey on. Ah, crooked. Right, it's on to me. Yeah, it's on there. Right, so now let's give her some juice. Oh, well, look at that. Such a very smooth mechanism. As you can see, I was right about the lights. All the ones at the front, lights up white.
and it's just the two there, it lights up red. And there's definitely no jerking or grinding noises coming from the model, which is good. Wrong way. What I will do, I will see if I can turn the lights off in this review so you can see the lights just like I did in the last one. Also, there's something else I want to show you. Keep looking at the fan. Look at that. The fan actually works. Look at that spinning. See, the fans on the Class 56, they only spin in one direction, and the one on the Class 50, well, that doesn't work at all. But it's nice to see that I finally had a model that actually has a working spinning fan. That's just mainly over the moon. So now, I'll turn the lights on as I've just done. I know the ones that they are still on, but still. Well, what else is there to say about this piece? Smooth running. Sprung buffers. Opening doors. Accurate livery. 
mem sockets and a fan that actually works. Wow. all I have time for today about so I hope you've enjoyed this review of the class 31 from Hornby and I'll see you again soon I'll tell you what before I sign off why don't I show you the running of the limb model? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So I'll just take the Hornby one off and just grab the limb model. Okay, well, the loco is now on the tracks, and so let's give it some juice. Wrong way. Okay, well, it is a little bit noisy. Well, it seems to be doing fairly well. Considering it's a Leon model and how old she is. Well, score then. I suppose the tracks could do with a bit of a clean after this video. Also, I've noticed that this 31 from Lima does have working lights, which I have added myself from Express Models. So there it is, the Lima class there is a lot of And you can see that there is a difference in the ring as well. Between both models. <laughs> 